Right, hello. Um, today on the Perimenopause Hub, as part of our Anxiety Month, I'm talking to Clarissa Christensen. Clarissa, would you like to just tell us a bit about what you do? Yeah, so I'm a menopause coach, but I'm also a certified mindfulness practitioner, and I've worked a long time with women who suffer from anxiety, panic attacks, and sleep problems. And outside of my coaching with my own clients, I also support a online mental health program called My eHealth, where I work as the mindfulness expert alongside um, psychologists and other therapists. And we have a range of clients in there. Some of them, I would say, were pretty close to being patients because of their issues. So looking at anxiety, um, <laughs> looking at anxiety, I suppose if we start right at the beginning, how would you describe what anxiety feels like to somebody? Well, I can do that quite well because I've been an anxiety sufferer through my perimenopause and it feels at times like you're losing control. It's this overwhelming sense that your mind is racing. You can feel a lot of tenseness in your body. Your breathing can feel restricted and you are struggling to get out of that situation. If you have an anxiety attack, it often feels like that. And you're thinking, and it can often feel like you're looking down at yourself and thinking, oh my God, get me out of here. But you can also have anxiety uh, feelings that are just this generalized um, sense of just being out of ease with yourself, a sense of dis-ease where you worry about everything. You worry about your children, your partner, the world, your health. And I call that, that's called GAD, that's a generalized anxiety disorder. And that's very difficult to live with. It's very debilitating because there's not a break from the, the constant sort of thinking and the fact that your thinking's distorted. It's not, it's not grounded in the reality of what's happening, which can lead people to feeling, um, leading to burnout for some people. And it's very common, unfortunately, and especially with women. And a lot of women find that they experience anxiety for the first time in perimenopause, don't they? Um, yes, that's I, correct. And that is absolutely down to the fact that our hormones are changing. Yeah. So for anybody watching this who either has been a lifelong sufferer of anxiety or for whom it has suddenly hit them like a ton of bricks, what are some coping strategies that they can start to take on board? Well, I'd say there are uh, probably three legs, like it's a three-legged stool to managing anxiety. The first is to be able to manage it in the moment. You know, we don't want our feelings of anxiety to escalate or we, and we want to kind of see if we can arrest them as much as we're capable of it. And that is very much about those sort of grounding in the moment mindfulness practices that are that many people may be familiar with. And that kind of nips, nips it a little in the bud so that our mind doesn't start to race, that our body doesn't go into complete fight and flight or freeze mode. Or sometimes I think we just freeze and we're numbed by the situation, powerless. And for me, that's a lot about creating distance between yourself, your physical self and what's going on. I have worked a lot with people who have varying degrees of anxiety and I often don't start with focusing in on the body and breathing, which we hear quite a lot. Um, one of the things I do is to get people to direct their senses away from themselves and use techniques that come from mindfulness for trauma. I've worked uh, quite a bit with Professor Durden, Tim Durden at Salford University and, and done some training with him. And I think these are very helpful techniques for women to take on board. You could, for example, use the five senses because simply by grounding in our senses, we are moving from 
the sympathetic nervous system racing around and we're activating the calming, soothing, rest and digest aspects of our parasympathetic nervous system. That's what we want to do. So in that space, what we want to do is ground and we can use five things you can see in the space you're in and you can focus your attention on some, some things that you can see. We can focus on sounds, so four things you can hear, three things you can smell, two things that you can feel. You know, it might be just your feet on the ground and the, your seat on the butt, you know, seat sitting on the on the chair, and maybe one thing you can taste, but if if you're able to. But the thing to do is to direct that away from your breathing and, and, and things like that because you can just tighten up. And if you're in panic, you're often very tight. And then I'm asking you to breathe one, you go, I, I can't. So that directing is the first stage of being able to move away from that. Sometimes I might give people who suffer from that little elastic men. They're a little elastic anxiety men. They're really quite cute. I'll put a picture up in the group. You can pull those as well and sort of direct your attention out, sort of something away from you, you know. So if you yeah, don't so like anything, the five anything that's getting you out of out of this internal anxiety, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I suppose in, in, and that, in that's some... for me is always the first point okay so it was going to be a three-legged stool so what was what was part two of the uh, of the plan part two is stopping the rumination and the inner critic i think that it's very common when um you've had an anxiety attack that you berate yourself there's there can be shame associated with that there can be um, you know, how stupid you are, how useless you are. And, and that way, I think that's where we can use compassion practices. And, and that's when we can, you know, use nice practices that have come from people like Dr. Kristin Neff and Dr. Christopher Germer in their work in mindful self-compassion. And I use those practices a lot where we put our hands on our hearts and tell ourselves, you know, that we are having a difficult day, that we do feel anxious. We're acknowledging and accepting what we feel in the moment. We're also recognizing that that's okay. This is a tough day today. This was a tough moment, but I'm okay. And bringing a common sense of humanity as well, which is part of self-compassion because it has the self-kindness, but it has common humanity in it as well, which says, well, you know, I'm not alone. Lots of other women are also experiencing this issue or I'm not alone in the feeling like this, it's okay. And then just, you know, be kind to yourself, say kind words to yourself. Um, and that helps the afterthought so that, again, we're not allowing this to be a shame based criticism and rumination, which sets into place lots of cognitive distortions about what happened. And the final piece of the stool is working beyond that. What I'm always saying to people is you're trying to open your window of tolerance to your anxiety it isn't going to go away it is a human emotion and un unless you change your hormonal status it will occur and it's occurring a lot in the early stages of perimenopause when hormones are much more fluctuating than than maybe later on but you you're going to experience it so you want to be able to have the ability to to tolerate it to accept it and and then allow it to be but have some tools to stop it as well but in the windows of tolerance space where i work with people is to create things like compassionate thought records looking at your thoughts not from them is a very typical mindfulness um, approach so you're looking at your thoughts and saying is this true is this thought even true that i've had that's creating this anxiety for me would I speak to my best friend in this way? Um, how can I reframe the way I think? The thought create anxiety. Absolutely. So, so that's, that's really what I do. So, I mean, I guess so just to sort of sum it up, it's 
get yourself out of yourself as it were so the the five four three two one with the senses and then be kind to yourself which is a biggie because we're all bad for that aren't we <laughs> and then as you say acknowledge the thoughts and and see would i think this would i say this out loud probably not and actually yeah those are really really useful techniques and and simple techniques as well nothing too um daunting to start doing no and and then you can you know outside of the anxiety attack you can practice things like mindful breathing because they will bring self-awareness so that you can feel that little anxiety attack popping up and you can probably you know have the ability to manage it but much better to do those mindfulness of breathing exercises when you're feeling calm so that you're able to then if you want to bring them in to manage your anxiety you have the skill and the ability to do it rather than having none and then being in the moment so you're also cultivating an awareness that you're not your thoughts they're just a stream of mental events which may or may not be facts even if they tell you that they are that's brilliant thank you so much clarissa you're welcome <laughs>